I am running this very special edition podcast because I think there's some things that people want to know about. Laws and Trump. Laws are a skill. As with anything. I will give you a beautiful example from Michigan. It was a requirement. 15 years old if you want to learn how to drive a car. But some people would miss it by a birthday. One day. So they're 16 years old taking driver's education. They don't have they don't have that year to drive with their parents after the class makes big, big, big challenges. As soon as they finish driver's education, they're out on the road. No, no practice time. And they're driving late because of some stupid law. They changed the law. Finally, I believe in Michigan, it was a Republican Congress and a Democrat governor. You had to be 14 years old, eight months, and then you take driver's education. That gives you time to start. So you don't miss it by a couple days. Wow. That was such, that was so simple. That was so common sense. Why didn't we do that before? That is an example of a good, of smart laws. That's what laws need to be smart. Most of the problems in the country are not about the the bipartisan political topics. That's just everyone's arguing about do you like you don't like foreigners you don't like immigrants that's that's all politicians marketing stuff that's 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 republicans letting people believe that it's about this or that to get people riled up and the democrats letting other people believe that to get riled. they're just that's not what it's really about nothing trump is doing is about loving immigrants or not it's marketed that way to get votes from both republicans and democrats don't you see this Do you really believe, do you really believe that Republicans hate immigrants and Democrats are the only ones who love them? Do you, do you, if you are uh, a Republican, do you believe that Democrats hate America? No, that's just what Republican politicians, they don't say, they lead you to believe, they let you believe it. Most, most. Most of us share the same ideologies. Now, this is a, it's a, I'm going to give you an illustration. If, if making laws was like drawing pictures, generally speaking, there's two types of lawmakers, and they can be Republicans or Democrats, either one. There's two types of lawmakers. One type of lawmaker, he's an awesome artist. He's spent thousands of hours drawing pictures. And so his his hand has skill. He can go whoop, 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 and he's just awesome. He draws an awesome picture. He gets ready to sell it. Competition comes along. Tony Soprano shows up at his house and says, uh, hey, it's a nice picture. Uh, your wife's nice too. I know where she lives. And uh, it'd be a shame if anything ever happened to her. Or uh, it'd also be a shame if that uh, that really nice picture ever left your house. Bye. And so then the artist goes, okay, all right. Tony Soprano is giving me a passive aggressive threat. I'm an awesome artist, but I'm not going to put my work out there because Tony Soprano's friend will have competition problems or whatever. So he's an awesome artist, but he doesn't, he doesn't put his skills out there because he's controlled. Oh, great. My phone's going off making noises. Do you ever have that happen? I do. And I'm leaving it in the podcast to let you know that I'm like you. And I also have my my paper here that's empty that I wave around so that it sounds like I'm doing something to illustrate the absurdity of marketing. Because if I have a paper, it sounds like I'm reading something, right? Because people with a microphone, people they're supposed to act like they've got a paper they're reading. We can put it on the computer screen, but if I have the sound of the paper, it sounds like I'm going through a list of important things, right? Because when Bill O'Reilly's on TV... He's not using an Amazon Kindle or a tablet. No, he's got papers and a pen. Right. Marketing. Trump gets up on TV, signs fewer executive orders that actually, understanding laws, Trump's executive orders don't really do a lot. They they really, they don't, they do some things, but they are seriously overrated. Trump's supporters are too happy and his opponents are too angry. His executive orders are just marketed well. 
if you understand what what politicians years ago in Michigan didn't about the driver's education law being 15 years old before you can learn instead of 14 years, eight months, so you got time to practice and don't miss it by a day. Politicians years ago in Michigan didn't get that. And if you don't get that, if you're like them, you're going to see Trump's marketing and you're going to go nuts, happy, angry, whatever. You're going to go nuts about these executive orders. But if you understand how the laws go on behind the scenes and what good laws are like, you gotta, you got to listen to people and know the details of what's going on. And if you understand that, you're going to go, well, Trump's laws, let's see, well, one, he said that a long time ago. Two, he's undoing everything Obama did because Obama did everything through executive orders, which is just psh, here today, gone tomorrow, house of cards, rather than slowly building it with cement blocks through legislation. Congress didn't do what Obama wanted, so he just built a house of cards. Obama, Obama could have taken all his time and, and laid in, you know, five, six layers of bricks and, and left some serious stuff in the way for Trump, but he didn't. And I know that because that's how law works. Everything Trump's doing is here today, gone tomorrow with the wind, just like what Obama did. It's not all that wonderful or horrible. And if you understand the legislative process, you'll know that. And that's the problem in America. It's not about Democrats and Republicans. And it's not about loving foreigners or not. Re Republicans love foreigners. It's just that some of them, more than one person trying to come into the country is bad. More than one. And we need the permission to tell him no. And, and but saying that is politically incorrect. <gasps> you said no to a foreigner. Oh, you don't like foreigners, a foreigner hater. You know, that's what's going on. It, and it's that that's all from marketing from both political parties to get the people all excited so they can get votes. No one hates foreigners and no one hates America. Some some people might. But no one wants their own country to just burn and they burn with it. Not many people really want that. People want the best for the country. They want all the people that are angry smashing things. They think that that's going to help the country. We want to help the country. We generally agree on that. So this isn't about being anti-America or not. And this isn't about being anti-immigrant or not. The real issue here isn't what all the political parties market it up to be. It's about the quality of the laws. Back to my illustration before I interrupted myself. You got the one guy. He draws awesome pictures. Tony Soprano comes to his house, makes a few passive aggressive threats. Tell him his wife is beautiful and it'd be terrible if something happened to her. And then the guy decides, oh, uh, Tony Soprano doesn't want me to put my artwork out there. So he doesn't put it out. He's an awesome artist, but he's controlled. That's a politician who's good at what he does, and that's why he gets elected, but he doesn't do good things very much, very often, because he's controlled by special interest lobbyists, big money, all behind the scenes, and you don't know who they are. They're not the Koch brothers. Koch brothers are a front. Yeah, they're involved with stuff. But if you really owned trillions of dollars, you would not put your name on any legislation. You'd put other people's names on it so they never find you. If you're going to go with that conspiracy theory that Trump is part of those special interests and lobbyists who control those politicians, they're good at what they do, but they don't put their stuff out there because they're controlled. If you think Trump's part of that, then you must also believe that Trump is only a distraction to bigger powers going on behind the scenes, such as Monsanto. Where, where's the uproar about Monsanto? Did they suddenly stop what they were doing? Hey, George, did Monsanto suddenly stop? Oh, they didn't. Right, right. And all of the social justice people, all, all, of the, all of the people concerned about the little guy who hate Monsanto stopped attacking Monsanto because they're all mad at Trump. Right. Monsanto has not been facing as much public scrutiny, folks, because Trump's executive orders that aren't that wonderful or terrible because they're only executive orders that don't really do much or not well-written laws. It's just, I want to see better things. You know, okay. I want to see that to stop. Uh, okay. What? I'm not sure what that means. The federal judge just fixed a huge problem. Don't get distracted. 
So we got the one guy. He's got his awesome legislation. He's good at it, but he's controlled, so he doesn't put his laws out there. All right. Then you got the other guy. The other type of artist. The other type of lawmaker. He takes his pen. He looks at his pen, and he says, Give me good pictures! And the pen's like, um, Dude, you have to pick me up. Don't talk back to me! Give me good pictures! You draw good pictures for that other guy. Yeah, well, well, he he uses he picks me up for thousands of hours. It's I don't you see I don't actually do it. Don't tell me that. I saw those pictures come out of you. But but that was only because someone else was moving. I don't give me good pictures. Good pictures. Give me good pictures. And then they write a law just like that. Give me good pictures. And that's pretty much what the law says. And these are terrible laws. Kids shouldn't be practicing to drive till they're 15. And you shouldn't drive till you're 16. Okay. Well, that, that leads to people being bad drivers because they're not very practiced and they don't drive till they're 17. You, you, if you want people to drive at 16 and to not practice till they're 15, what that means is you need to say 14 years, eight months. You got to sit down and think about the deals, the, the factors and the, you got to think about it all. You can't just dictate the results that you want. And that's the difference between good lawmakers and bad lawmakers. We've got those who don't have a clue what they're doing. They just demand results, and the results are the law, and that's it. Not a means to get there. And you got the other people who are really good at it, but then all the big money goes and finds those people and controls them. And Trump supporters believe it. What they believe is that Trump wasn't controlled by them because he went there with his own money. That's what, that's what they believe. That's their argument. That's what's been marketed. Now, example. Remember the internet scare where they were going to shut down the internet? Remember all that? The bad internet laws. It all related to politicians not knowing how law works. That's another example. Think back to that. The internet stuff. That's an example. That wasn't a partisan issue. That was about skill. That was about the laws being good and decent. Now, Calm down, take a deep breath, and cut with all the marketing. Don't worry about all these scare tactics. Don't buy it. Politicians and newspapers trying to sell people on stuff. Don't buy it. (sighs) Abraham Lincoln. I think we generally like him because he ended slavery. Without him, slavery would probably still be somewhere. I hope anyway that we like Abe Lincoln. He said, study the Constitution. Go read the Constitution a number of times. Go read it. Go read it. Familiarize yourself with it. Read it. I think it's fun to read because I like how vague but powerful it is. It speaks in these broad terms. There shall be a Congress. You know, wow. That and that does stuff. It, it's a basic, simple level law. It's the big, it's the big paintbrush. You paint a big, use a big paintbrush and you paint a background and then you let it dry. You got the little paintbrush and you paint in the details. Well, the constitution is the big paintbrush part. And, and it's, it's, I mean, it's something else. Abraham Lincoln used that to end slavery. When that, that constitution was made when slavery was legal and Abraham Lincoln used it to end slavery. Isn't that, br- that is powerful. Very powerful. Good, bad, it's interesting. Study the Constitution. Go look at it. Another thing. <sighs> when I was uh, a kid, it, it, it must have been after our pet dinosaur died, because I'm old. I'm 36, so I'm old. Well, I don't know anything. I don't know anything. I, you only know something if you're 20, or 16, or 25. But I'm 36, so I don't know anything. I'm stupid, you see. But I remember back when I did know everything. When I, when I, the dad and I, I was 15 years old, we went and there was a constitutional crisis in America. I, I, that was back when dinosaurs roamed the earth. So I know that your teachers never told you about this, but in the 90s, back just after my pet dinosaur died, the states were thinking about changing the constitution, having a constitutional convention. And I was there in Michigan at the committee meeting. My legislator for in Michigan was on the committee. It was like, uh, photograph memory serves about eight, nine, ten people on the committee. Maybe, yeah. So 
I remember being there and watching one person after another get up and talk to the committee and explain the problems in different ways. Um, one guy got up and he said, uh, well, look, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not an expert in any of this. I, I know that there are lots of lawyer sleazebags in the room, but I'm close to a sleazebag. I'm an accountant. And everybody in the room laughed. And then he went and explained uh, something that he knows as an accountant as to why it would be it would hurt the country to have a constitutional convention at that point. And then someone else got up. He had, he had a lot. He has this big stack of papers under his arm. And he had little half sawed off glasses, didn't comb his hair well. And he just had lots of brilliant ideas. He just rattled through very quickly. And people, I saw the, I saw the politicians at the committee listening to him and understanding. And I saw the looks of, oh, I understand that. And they were understanding. And I saw that, I saw it happen. Have you ever seen that happen? You know, committees are open. You, you can attend a school board meeting. I attended school board meetings. I sat on a committee that I voted on my own curriculum in high school since the time I was 15 years old. So I don't, I, you don't see me lecturing people. Oh, Constitution, I'm so sad. I read the Constitution. I voted on a state governed committee on my own curriculum. I've been to the committee hearings where the state of Michigan decided things. I even saw a committee approve a law and send it to Congress, which was eventually passed. I've, 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 I've seen these things. I've, I've sat down and, and, I've, and I've looked at these things. And you can, too. Your, your, your city government meetings are open. You can go to them. Find out when they are and just watch them. Go, go to your state capitol. Don't, don't cry and protest and litter the lawn and step on the grass. Go into a meeting and don't talk. Just see how it happens. Get good at seeing how it happens. And then you can play the game and win at it. That's a really good idea. And that's what my father taught me. And you can do the same thing. And we'll get a whole lot more stuff done if we understand how this process works. If we understand that, that it's not about hating or loving America and hating or loving immigrants. It's, it's about writing good quality laws. And we have to be wise that we don't buy all the marketing, the marketing that, that Trump's executive orders are the beginning or end of the world or the marketing that, that we hate each other. Don't believe that. They're politicians and, and news people trying to sell you and, and get your votes and get your dollars to, to, to look at website clicks and stuff. Don't buy it. Instead, get involved and then, then we can kick butt in the years to come. And that's this very special edition podcast. I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.